Hello and welcome to another episode of Current Affairs MCQ. Let us begin with the previous day's question. Regarding cooperatives, consider the following statements. 1. The 97th Constitutional Amendment Act 2011 granted cooperatives constitutional status. 2. Article 19, Clause 1, Subclause C ensures the right to form cooperatives. 3. State-level cooperatives are governed by the union list, while multi-state cooperatives are regulated by the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act 2002. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The correct answer is option B. The 97th Constitutional Amendment Act 2011 granted cooperatives constitutional status. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Article 19, Clause 1, Subclause C ensures the right to form cooperatives. Hence, statement 2 is correct. State level cooperatives fall under the state list and are governed by the Cooperative Societies Act of the respective state legislature, while multi state cooperatives are governed by the union list and the Multi State Cooperative Societies Act 2002. Hence, Statement 3 is not correct. Article 43b promotes them as a director principles of the state policy. Part 9b, Articles 243zh to 243zt provides governance provisions for cooperatives. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Moving on to the first question, consider the following statements. 1. India has set an ambitious target of achieving a 100 gigawatt nuclear power capacity by 2024 with the current capacity standing at 8.18 gigawatts. 2. Small modular reactors are nuclear reactors that have one-third of the power output of conventional nuclear power reactors, a capacity of 300 megawatts per unit. 3. It allows FDI up to 49% in nuclear projects to retain Indian control and promote joint ventures. Which of the statements given above is or are not correct? A. 1 only B. 2 only C. 2 and 3 only D. 3 only the correct answer is option D. The Union Budget 2025-26 set an ambitious target of 100 gigawatt nuclear power capacity by 2024, positioning nuclear energy as a key pillar in achieving Vixit Bharat and net zero emissions by 2070. India's present nuclear power capacity is 8.18 gigawatts with an ambitious goal of reaching 100 gigawatts by 2047. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Small modular reactors are advanced nuclear reactors with a power output of up to 300 megawatts per unit, about one-third the capacity of conventional nuclear power reactors. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Currently, nuclear energy remains on the negative list for FDI and is closed to private participation. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. Hence, option D is the correct answer. Question 2. The Kamchatka Peninsula, recently in the news, lies between which of the following water bodies? A. Black Sea and Caspian Sea B. Sea of Japan and Yellow Sea C. Sea of Okhots and Pacific Ocean D. Arctic Ocean and Kara Sea The correct answer is option C. Kamchatka Peninsula lies on the Pacific Ring of Fire, positioned between the Sea of Okhotsk to the west and the Pacific Ocean and Bering Sea to the east. It sits at the conjunction of the Pacific and North American tectonic plates, making it a highly active seismic zone. The region features two main mountain ranges, Sredini and Vostokni, and is drained by the Kamchatka River, its primary waterway. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 3. Consider the following statements regarding session of parliament. 1. A session refers to the period between the first sitting and adjournment of a house. 2. Prorogation is the formal termination of a parliamentary session by the president. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both 1 and 2. D. Neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option B. A session refers to the period between the first sitting and prorogation of a house. A recess is the interval between prorogation and reassembly of the parliament. Typically, there are three sessions in a year, budget session, monsoon session and winter session. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. Key parliamentary procedures Prorogation 
it is the formal termination of a parliamentary session by the president after prorogation the house can meet again only when it is summoned afresh by the president hence statement 2 is correct adjournment it refers to the temporary suspension of a parliamentary sitting by the presiding officer it may be for a short duration or for the day adjournment sine die means suspension without a fixed date for the next sitting summoning under article 85 of the constitution the president summons each house of the parliament ensuring that the interval between two sessions does not exceed 6 months dissolution dissolution marks the end of lok sabha's term unlike the rajya sabha which is a permanent body hence option b is the correct answer question 4 the vaccine at falsi vax which was recently in the news is associated with the prevention of which disease A tuberculosis B malaria C dengue D hepatitis C the correct answer is option B the indian council of medical research is developing a novel chimeric malaria vaccine ed falsi vax it is a multi stage malaria vaccine targeting two key stages of plasmodium falciparum pre erythrocytic stage and sexual stage using lactococcus lactis a chimeric vaccine is is one that combines genetic material from different sources to create a hybrid or recombinant structure malaria is caused by plasmodium parasite transmitted by the infected female anopheles mosquitoes hence option b is the correct answer question 5 consider the following statements regarding unified payments interface 1 Unified Payments Interface is a real-time mobile payment system developed by National Payments Corporation of India. 2. Bharat Interface for Money is a UPI-based payment app developed by NPCI. 3. As of July 2025, UPI is operational in 7 countries including the UAE, Singapore, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, France and Mauritius. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A one only B one and two only C two and three only D one two and three The correct answer is option D Unified Payments Interface is a real time mobile payment system developed by National Payments Corporation of India hence statement 1 is correct It allows users to link multiple bank accounts into one app for seamless peer-to-peer and merchant transactions. UPI enables both push and pull transactions using a virtual payment address with two-factor authentication, eliminating the need to enter bank details each time. UPI is built on IMPS and integrates Aadhaar enabled payment system. Bharat Interface for Money is a UPI based payment app developed by NPCI. Hence statement 2 is correct. UPI is now live in 7 countries including the UAE, Singapore, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, France and Mauritius. Hence statement 3 is correct. Hence option D is the correct answer. Question 6 Consider the following description. A revolutionary who joined Gandhi's non-cooperation movement at the age of 15 later turned to armed resistance after the movement was called off he was involved in the kakori train action reorganized the hindustan republican army into a socialist oriented revolutionary group and led its military operations which of the following revolutionaries is being referred to in the above passage a ashfaqullah khan b bhagat singh c chandrashekhar azad d shivram hari rajguru the correct answer is option c The Prime Minister paid tribute to Chandrashekhar Azad on his birth anniversary honoring his role in the freedom struggle and his inspiration to the youth. Born in 1906 as Chandrashekhar Tiwari in Bhabra village, Madhya Pradesh, he showed revolutionary spirit from a young age. At 15 he joined Gandhi's non-cooperation movement. Azad turned to revolutionary activities, joined Hindustan Republican Army and was involved in Kakori train robbery to fund armed resistance. In 1928 Bhagat Singh Chandrashekhar Azad Sukhdev Shiv Verma 
and Vijay Kumar Sinha reorganized the HRA with socialism as one of the main objectives, renaming it the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association. Chandrasekhar Azad died at Alfred Park, Allahabad on 27 February 1931 at just 24. The park was later renamed Chandrasekhar Azad Park in his order. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 7. Consider the following statements regarding optical atomic clocks. 1. Optical atomic clocks are precise timekeeping devices that use optical frequency atomic transitions to measure time, offering far greater accuracy than cesium clocks. 2. They work by measuring the frequency of light absorbed or emitted during atomic electronic transitions. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both 1 and 2. D. Neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C. Optical atomic clocks are ultra-precise timekeeping devices that measure time using optical frequency atomic transitions. Because light oscillates much faster than microwaves, optical clocks can achieve far superior accuracy up to one part in 10 raised to the power 18 compared to traditional cesium-based clocks which operate in microwave range. This means they could lose or gain only one second over 15 billion years. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The working principle of optical clocks is based on measuring the frequency of light emitted or absorbed during atomic electronic transitions. These transitions occur at stable and highly reproducible frequencies, making them ideal for maintaining a precise time standard. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 8. Consider the following statements regarding impeachment of judges in India. 1. Judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts can be removed under Articles 124, Clause 4 and 218 for proved misbehaviour or incapacity as per the Judges Inquiry Act 1968. 2. A removal motion requires support from 100 Lok Sabha or 50 Rajya Sabha members and must be passed in the same session by a special majority. 3. No judge of the Supreme Court or High Court has been successfully removed through the impeachment process since independence. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The correct answer is option C. Article 124, Clause 4 of the Constitution provides for the removal of Supreme Court judges and Article 218 extends the same procedure to High Court judges. The Judges' Inquiry Act 1968 lays down the detailed process for investigation and motion of impeachment. Judges can only be removed on grounds of proved misbehaviour or incapacity. Hence, statement 1 is correct. An impeachment motion must be supported by at least 100 members of the Lok Sabha or 50 members of the Rajya Sabha. Once admitted, a three-member inquiry committee is constituted to examine the charges. For removal, the motion must be passed in both houses during the same session by a special majority, that is, an absolute majority, and a two-thirds majority of members present and voting. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Since independence, no judge of the Supreme Court or High Court has been successfully removed through the impeachment process. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 9. Consider the following statements regarding India-Maldives relations. 1. India has a free trade agreement with the Maldives. 2. India was the largest source market for tourism to the Maldives in 2023. 3. The Greater Mali Connectivity Project in the Maldives is funded through Indian grant and line of credit. How many of the statements given above is or are not correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The correct answer is option B. As of July 2025, India and the Maldives are in discussions to negotiate a free trade agreement and an investment treaty. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. 
Indian tourists have emerged as the largest source market for Maldives, accounting for 11.2% of arrivals in 2023. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. The Greater Mali Connectivity Project is the largest infrastructure project in the Maldives, funded by India through a USD 100 million grant and a USD 400 million line of credit. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Question 10. Consider the following statements regarding zero-dose children. 1. Zero-dose children are those who haven't received even the first DTP vaccine dose and lack access to routine immunization. 2. The percentage of zero-dose children in India increased from 0.06% in 2023 to 0.11% in 2024. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one, nor two. The correct answer is option A. Zero dose children are defined as those who have not received even the first dose of the DTP vaccine for diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, indicating they are completely missed by routine immunization services. Hence, statement 1 is correct. As per the recent WHO UNICEF estimates, the share of zero-dose children in India dropped from 0.11% in 2023 to 0.06% in 2024. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Now, let us look at a practice question. Consider the following consumer price indices. 1. CPI for industrial workers 2. CPI for agricultural labourers 3. CPI for rural labourer 4. CPI for urban non-manual employees How many of the above is or are compiled by the Labour Bureau under the Ministry of Labour and Employment? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. Only 3 D. All 4 Please provide your answers in the comment section.